Today, we're going to be using ChatGPT to create a game in virtual reality using Unity. The last two videos did so well and I love seeing the response from the community, so we have to make another one. There is three and a half hours of footage I have chopped down into a nicely edited video for you. So even if you don't have game development experience, you can still enjoy the content. It just took so long to edit. Comment what you want me to add in part two of this video and you will be featured in the next video. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, of course, first thing we need to open open up Unity 3D project where we're going to create the game. So then we went over to ChatGPT and asked it, how much do you actually know about the XR toolkit? Okay, first thing we're going to ask it is how much do you know about the XR toolkit for VR development in Unity? Let's see what it knows. Come on. As an AI language model, I have knowledge about the XR toolkit for VR development. So it's okay, okay. For AR and VR. Oh, wow. I didn't know it does that. AR. That's cool. The XR toolkit is what we're going to use to actually develop the VR components in the game. So after finding out it does know quite a lot about XR Toolkit, we then asked it, how can I actually add the XR Toolkit to my game? Of course, then we added it to the project. We created a giant floor that our character can stand on. And then we asked it, what's the first thing that I should add to my VR game? If you're using the XR Toolkit to build a VR game in Unity, the first thing you should uh, add to your projects is the XR Rig Prefab. Okay, yes, sir. So it told us the XR Origins kit, which is essentially the camera and the controllers. So we simply added it to our project and we decided to test it out. Take me there. Yeah, there it is. We can't move, we can look around, which is cool. So it's a start detecting the controllers, but not in the game. We can move our head, but the controllers just weren't tracking. On each hand had to assign the left controller and the right controller presets, and it worked. And we have working hands. Nice. Right now they're just beams. So this next section, we took a little step back and decided we need to get the basics down first. So the next thing we did, we downloaded some hands. Oh wow, that's really trippy. We wrote a very simple animation script. So when we press the buttons, the hands actually move. And there we had it. We had nice looking hands. So the next step was adding an enemy. So so we created a capsule and then created a material and changed the enemy to red because red bad. We then asked ChatGPT to write a script for the enemy to follow us. Write a script that allows an enemy to follow a player with the tag player. But it told me that it can't write the code for it. But I can provide you with a general idea of how to create an enemy that follows a player. What? Even though we did it in the last video. So we went to ChatGPT, asked it to create a script that allows an enemy to follow the player. I was like, maybe it's just me being dyslexic. Maybe I asked it stupid. So we phrased the command differently and it worked. So we copy and pasted the code. Uh, we had to create another capsule for our player, which sits right behind the camera and it worked. There you go. And he's following us. He's got stuck a little bit. We just teleport over here. Whoa, he's fast. Whoa, he is fast. That's a fast, <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's a fast boy. Hello. Wow, so he doesn't do anything, but I mean, he is, he is inside us. After this, ChatGPT actually went down. It wasn't responsive, it was coming up with error messages, and it turns out everybody had an issue with it that day of recording. Now, keep in mind at this point, I'm trying to upload every two to three days. It was the third day, so I was supposed to be posting that video that day which is now today, the day after. You get the gist. We're already really late to publish this video, so it going down did not help us at all. I was about to do Cake or Fake Part 2, but by some miracle that night, it came back up and then we got back to coding. So the next thing we wanted to add was the player's health. Now that the enemy follows us, we need our health to go down when the enemy touches us. So we asked ChatGPT to write a player health script for us. And the script that it wrote is that when the enemy collides with our player, like when they touch, the player will lose health. So it worked perfectly. Oh yeah, that's a... Okay, did he touch us? Did our health go down? Oh, it did. It did, it worked. Okay, sweet. Now for this next section, we actually struggled to get 
ChatGPT to help us on the last video. But I thought we might as well try this time. So we asked ChatGPT to write a script. It says write a script for Unity 3D to display the current health on a slider bar for the user interface. And of course, in the last video, this failed horribly. We tried many times and couldn't get ChatGPT to give us a viable option. So we created the actual health bar itself. And by some kind of miracle, it worked. Kind of. Right, touch me. Yeah. Oh my God, it works. Right, it's working, but that health bar is not accurate at all. <laughs> it's so crazy just seeing that big green bar in VR. But it's kind of working. I mean, that is really impressive. But this wasn't ChatGPT's error. The code actually worked. The issue was the slider itself. Sometimes they're a little bit fiddly to get the dimensions correct and make the bar go down. So I just had to play around with it for a little bit and we got it to work perfectly. What we could do is even put it on the hand. Like if you turn the hand and look at your hand, it can show the health or something. We're create with filled with ideas. Okay, after playing around with the slider for ages, let's see if this works. It should work. Two, three, four, five. Yes, okay, nice, 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 okay. So the next thing we did was the enemy's health. We asked ChatGPT to create a script for the enemy's health. Write us an enemy health script for Unity 3D. When the game object collides, the enemy loses health. It's written here a trigger for the player. If the player collides with it then it's gonna lose health but we actually but we use a sword or a bullet or something we're just gonna have to change it it was very similar to our player's health it used the tag system and it worked perfectly when yeah when the enemy collides with us it loses 10 health so all we have to do is now change that to something like a bullet which we're gonna add now so this part of the video is the most painful to watch we decided it was time for a weapon to do damage to our enemies so we decided to add a sword. So we went to the Unity Asset Store. We found a free simple sword. And although this sword was pretty cool, we were having a weird issue with the textures. So we can grab the sword. Now our only issue is, you see that pink texture there? Close my right eye, I can see it. But if I close my left eye, I can't see it. Whereas if we turn it around, it's fine. It's second we turn the sword around that we can't see anything. So I decided, uh, you know what? We'll just download another one. Added it to our Unity project and we clicked import. Now what it did, because this sword's name was sample scene, which is the exact same as our game is called Sample Scene. The sword we downloaded is called Sample Scene. The game we're making is called Sample Scene. When we imported the sword, it deleted our entire game. F this f asset, dude. And it has fully just deleted our entire game that we've been building the last couple of days while recording. So, we're gonna have to use the code we've got and redo this. So I'm gonna stay recording and yeah. It was already close to midnight. I needed to get this video up today, the next day, but it was nearly midnight. So I had to, you know what I'm saying? We already had the scripts in the enemy prefab. The only thing that deleted was the actual game itself. So I speed run the entire project, all the recording that we did, the hours and hours. It took me an hour to make it look like exactly how we left it off before it deleted it. Now, while this time lap happens, it might be a perfect time to ask you to subscribe. The things I do for your entertainment just look at my face look how angry i look during this time lapse i absolutely hated my life at this particular point in time so if that's not worth a subscribe i don't know what is but it took me about an hour to recreate the entire project and i finally got it to where we left it off we have finally after long got it back to where it should be nice right okay hate my life <laughs> so we downloaded a new new sword a third sword we added a capsule collider and guess what it worked perfectly we could slice those enemies slice slice so if i grab the sword and we're just going to teleport away from him quick 
Oh, it worked. Okay. Yeah, we killed it. So the next thing for us to do was to add an enemy spawner. Okay, so we're going to ask it, write a, write a Unity 3D script to spawn enemy prefabs. So let's go. Sure, here's an example script. All right, enemy spawner. You can add a spawn delay, the max amount of enemies at one time, uh, current enemies. Cool, right, let's go. So we copied and pasted the code from ChatGPT, put it onto the enemy spawner, and we actually had an error. Play, okay, let's see if this works. Give me my sword, because I'm gonna need to fight off these enemies that don't exist and no enemies are spawning. So why is the enemy spawner not spawning any enemies? Can we just copy this error? Chat GPT and say, it's giving me this error. The index was outside the bound of the arrays. To fix the spawn error, you need to make sure you have added at least one spawn point. Uh, I didn't see a spawn point array. Oh, I didn't see. I've just gone onto here and I didn't see any spawn points. Well, I mean, ChatGPT is right, so that is cool. So we can actually. Oh, that's so cool. We can actually allocate loads of spawning areas. Now maybe this might potentially actually work. So it would randomly spawn them in the exact locations and it worked perfect beyond my expectations. This worked. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, there's so many spawning. Yeah, da, 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 da. Oh my, oh my. Oh, this is great. Yeah, yeah. After seeing the success of the enemy spawner, which we didn't have very well with the last video, I decided to try something that I actually cut out the last video. I tried to add a kill counter via ChatGPT and I couldn't get it to work. ChatGPT would not do it for me in the last video. So I was like, let's try and do it this time. And I think because the last command before that was the enemy spawner, it understood the assignment. Not only did it create us a perfect kill counter, it gave us step-by-step -step instructions on each page of code of what we need to do. So we created our text just above the health bar. We applied all the lines of code to the right places and it actually freaking worked. We had a fully functioning game. Oh, oh, it's doing it. It's counting. It's actually counting. It's actually counting. Okay, we have score. We have score and health, score and health, score and health. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So besides deleting the entire project close to midnight and besides chat GPT going down This video was actually very fun to make and I'm pretty happy with the results Like I said at the beginning I need you to comment what you want me to add in part two of this video to be featured in the next video And of course if you could subscribe that's what helps me out a bunch We're trying to get to a hundred thousand subscribers. I appreciate you. I hope you have a fantastic day much love and and peace.